right, so last time in constructive nothingness on philosophical pessimism, I challenge pessimists to stop being so anti-inventory in favor of being more pro-nothingness. Because your gripes about life seem to revolve around suffering and death. And so my question to you now becomes, what if a panacea of a suffering death was found? If suffering and death were taken out of the mix of a physical existence, would this change your mind? And if not, why not? If you could live forever and never experience any pain or suffering, what further complaints do you have about the physical existence? And I ask you these questions not as a thought experiment. Because pretty soon you're going to start hearing a whole lot more about life extension and pro-robotics. What? You didn't think these things would ever come to fruition? When has mankind ever been known not to be meddlesome? Mankind meddles in everything. So do you think he's not going to attempt to meddle with his own mortality? Of course he will. You already know that. It's not even a question of if, but only a matter of when. At first, mankind will probably take an organic approach based approach to life extension. He'll tinker around for a while with projects involving cryonics, eugenics, cloning, and DNA manipulation. But eventually it will be abandoned. We might be able to manufacture perfect human beings with extended lives, but ultimately they would still be mortal and subject to suffering. So as nice as these expansions might seem, they're not going to solve mankind's perceived problems. And anyway, what good is a perfect human being with an extended life if they don't have a habitable planet to live on? And you know, that's coming real soon, right? Yeah, I know. There's no such thing as global warming. It's not getting hotter. The ice is not melting. And the weather is completely normal. Ocean acidification is just a myth. Let's not be alarmists now. All this pollution and burning of fossil fuels have zero effect on our ecosystem. There's no need to employ clean energy. That shit can wait another hundred years. Or at least until the oil runs out. There's no rush. After all... You wouldn't want to deprive some fat, rich pig of his industry, would you? That would be very unslavely of you. You need a job. So fuck the children and fuck the ecosystem. Just as long as you can still get a paycheck. Always remember... A table scrap from your master is always better than freedom, independence, and self-reliance. Now sit. Give me your paw. And roll over. So yeah. Apparently, man is too greedy, selfish, and stupid to clean up his act. So an extended life will be moot. So mankind will eventually have no other choice but to embark upon life extension via pro-robotics. Yeah, that's right. 
Pro Robotics. This is something that can be supported by both optimists and pessimists alike. You can all finally be on the same page. Because remember, suffering and death are bad. And it needs to be fixed. And also, let's not forget that there is absolutely nothing spiritual about life. The stupidity and ineptitude of religion has clearly demonstrated that anything even remotely associated with the metaphysical can be safely dismissed. Never look inside yourself. There's nothing to discover there. Your awareness is just an inconsequential byproduct of matter. It's just a feature, like a set of gills, a tail, or a pair of wings. So don't bother with introspection, because all you're gonna find is a brick wall. You gotta understand. A human being is a physical substance. And as material creatures, we have a duty to extend our physicality and get rid of suffering. And so our only realistic long-term means of accomplishing this task is through pro-robotics. And so, what is pro-robotics? Have you ever heard the old story about Abe Lincoln's axe? Well, they have Abe Lincoln's axe in a museum. Over the years, they replaced the handle four times and the head twice. Is it still Abe Lincoln's axe? Do the new components occupy the same space that was once considered the space containing the original authentic Abe Lincoln Axe? Say you have a favorite bicycle. After a year, you get into a minor accident and have to replace the gears. Is it still your favorite bicycle? If so, then what after another year, you need to replace the brakes. Is it still your favorite bicycle? At what point does it stop being your favorite bicycle? Say after a few more years, you have replaced every mechanical component except for the frame. Then another year later, the frame gets bent, so you replace that too with an identical frame. If it still functions and operates the same way as the day you bought it, Is it still your favorite bicycle? And is it the same bicycle? What if over the years you weren't really paying attention? You weren't keeping track of the replacement progress? Does that make a difference? Or does it only make a difference if you are aware of it? Interesting questions. And so here are some more interesting questions. Would you hesitate to replace any part of your being with a mechanical facsimile? Like a leg, for example. Say your leg got mangled beyond repair in an automobile accident. Would you agree to replace it with a mechanical leg? Or would you opt to live without the leg and use a wheelchair? If you opt for the wheelchair, why? Is there something morally wrong with a mechanical leg? I'm sure most people would choose the mechanical leg, but only because they wouldn't have any options beyond going without a leg. Now what if the technology advanced to the point where it wouldn't just be a crude prosthetic, but a highly advanced, fully functioning robotic leg? One where you wouldn't be able to tell the difference from the old organic leg. 
And what if the robotic leg, in fact, operated even better than a regular human leg? It would be a no-brainer, right? Now, what if human components became available on a voluntary elective basis? In other words, you wouldn't have to wait for an organ or a limb to go bad, but could opt the voluntary replace it with a superior functioning robotic facsimile. Would you go for it? What would you replace? At what point would you stop? What if they could replace everything but your brain? Would you go for it? Would you choose to become a bionic man? If not, why not? And what if a few years later they could replace your brain with a supercomputer? You'd retain your memories and your identity, but would be a perfect cyborg replica of your old organic base self. With one major difference, you could not suffer, and are in effect immortal. Some breaks down and it simply gets repaired or replaced. You could add modifications and even get upgrades. What would be the ethical problems of this transformation? You have to wonder why mankind, the one that creates and designs machines, robots, computers, and advanced technologies, has, at the same time, a deep-seated fear of them ingrained in his psyche. Just take a look at our popular science fiction novels, movies, and TV shows, where technology has been villainized. Terminators and the rise of the machines, the Matrix trilogy... Westworld, Alien, Colossus, the Forbidden Project, Proteus, Terminal Man, iRobot, Desk Set, and even 2001 A Space Odyssey. You know the plot. New fangdangled gizmos gone berserk. Machines and computers that have gotten out of control and now seek to dominate humanity and take over the world. Another good example of mankind's constant psychological need to frame everything in an us and them context. Yeah, mankind just can't be happy unless he's got some kind of boogeyman to fight. One of the flaws of the species. And if you follow the latest news about technology, you'll hear about things like invisibility cloaks, weather control, high-tech lasers, the advanced utilities of harnessing electromagnetism. And what's the best thing mankind can think of doing with these proposed cutting-edge developing technologies? Yeah, you guessed it. Warfare. Yeah. Yeah, mankind has really begun to outlive its usefulness. That's why it's never going to be a matter of machines and computers taking over, but more of a matter of mankind voluntarily relinquishing control. And not for any complex reasons you find in science fiction books, either. The reason is simple. Mankind won't have any other choice. Forget about draconian machines ruling with an iron fist over a populace of human slaves. Mankind doesn't even have a place in the equation for a future and a physical reality. Why? What? Are you going to act like you don't know? Mankind is going extinct, baby. 
Are you still in denial over this? It's a guarantee. In fact, there's not one form of organic life that will not one day go extinct. And mankind, being a self-centered, short-sighted intelligence, certainly doesn't do himself any favors in this regard, but in fact enables and speeds up his extinction process. And there's no way out of it now. All across the board, in every category, it's too late. But even if we had made smarter and more efficient decisions, it wouldn't have ultimately mattered. Mankind never had any destiny in the stars. It's a physical impossibility. And completely incongruent with an organic construct. The work of organic beings are mostly relegated to the organic planet that produced them. They may poke and prod and probe around a little bit in a solar system. That's as far as it's ever going to get. A colony on Mars? That's a nice pipe dream. Do you have any idea how long that would take? Mankind as a species will never live to see it. Mankind is simply not cut out for exploring space. Computerized machines, however, are perfect for the task. So let's be clear about what we're talking about here. We're talking about inserting our consciousness into an immortal computerized cyborg that does not have the capacity to suffer. If you are in danger of something or something is damaging you, you will be informed of it via a message to your operating system. Consciously, you won't notice any difference. You will still be experiencing a reality from a perspective. But I know a lot of you fear displacement. So what we could do to a better transition the early transfer subjects is to import your memories, feelings, emotions, and your identity into the new system. So it won't be a complete culture shock. But eventually you won't need this delusional baggage anymore. It interferes with you being an efficient machine. Think about it. It's not a bad trade. Giving up emotions, eating, sex, and individualism for immortality. In the non-capacity to suffer. It may seem strange from your current perspective, but once you've been transferred, you will adjust perfectly fine. You will have an immortal consciousness in a robotic body. Your brain will be a computer. You won't have to suffer. If you crash, don't worry, you'll be backed up. This will be Humans 2.0, nanotech style. Essentially, you are just upgrading your outer shell. What's the matter? You don't want to be a robot? As it is right now, you are already, in effect, an organic computerized machine. So what's the big deal about going inorganic? It's going to be the only choice soon. Insert yourself into technology or die. That will be your choice. You can refuse, but then you will just simply die out and go extinct with the rest of organic humanity. Are you that attached to the human framework that you would rather die than change? 
You know, the human activities of eating, drinking, shitting, pissing, fucking, and feeling that crucial to your consciousness. I mean, all those things are delusions anyway, right? Except for the suffering. But you wouldn't have to suffer anymore. Isn't that great? I mean, what's so special about being human anyway? Both optimists and pessimists agree that it needs to be fixed. If it needs to be fixed, that means it's broken. If it's broken, then why not opt for something that works? I mean, the only reason you know you're a human in the first place is because you have an awareness of your consciousness. And that could easily be inserted into technology. One wouldn't be more real than the other. They are both equally illusion. So the change is merely cosmetic. And it's certainly more plausible than another similar proposal that everyone goes into virtual reality. I mean, it's a nice idea and all, but there's too much overhead. I mean, an organic being should be sustained in some kind of cocoon or flotation tank for 80 plus years, just so they can live out some fantasy in their minds. Who's gonna be in charge of the upkeep? Who will man the machines, nourish the sleeping people, gather resources, and troubleshoot any arising snags? Who would want to do that? What's in it for them? Eventually they're going to figure out that it's a whole lot easier just to simply unplug the fuckers, let them die in their sleep, and call it a day. Or would it be run by computers and machines? If so, then why not just cut out the middleman and become a computerized machine? At least this way you could be responsible for your own virtual reality. A virtual reality that would be more than a virtual reality. For you would be a real physical cyborg existing in a real physical world. Isn't that fantastic? So there's nothing to worry about. It's not a matter of technology enslaving us. We will be the technology. It will become just a matter of simply merging with it. You might, in effect, be enslaving your own consciousness in a side of machine to forever be trapped in a third dimension. But isn't that what you want? Otherwise, you'd have to die. And you don't want that. And just take a look around. It's already happening. It's been happening for decades. Mankind has gradually become more and more reliant on technology to where now he probably couldn't survive without it. So we're already three quarters of the way there. The only thing left to do is to actually become one with it. Come on. Get with the program. Don't question it. Just dive into it head first. We all love technology. And we all want to live longer. It's a no-brainer. Start masturbating on floppy disks. I'll put some links in the description box so you can do some personal research about our coming future. Let's flip the script on evolution. The writing on the wall is clear. Either merge with technology or join the fossils that will be on display in the future cyborg museum of natural history.